In my quest to expand my range of kit bashing from just covering Space Marines, I thought I would turn my hand to some Age of Sigmar forces. The Seraphon to be exact. Currently there are no on foot skink chiefs. We have Pterodon, Ripidactyl and Stegodon chiefs, but no infantry based skink leadership that is currently still in production. I'm Pete the Wargamer and I hope to remedy this problem with some kit bashing. Now, the basis of this conversion can be found in the Skink Star Priest set. This single character gave me a miniature that was not only slightly bigger in stature than a regular Skink, but it also featured a more ornate design. So, I began by removing all the parts required to build the Star Priest from the sprue before cleaning up those components. Now, the biggest problem with me using a Star Priest was that it's already quite a recognisable miniature, what with the excessive number of feathers that it features. So, to give myself a little uniqueness, I needed to remove the feathers from around the neck. I started this process using my clippers, cutting as close to the cord around the neck as possible. This allowed me to remove the bulk of the feathers quickly and easily. I kept these feathers to one side as they would make a useful addition to my bits box. With the feathers removed, I then used my knife to help tidy up the cuts that I had made with those clippers. With the feathers removed, I could add the head. However, instead of using the original Star Priest head, I had opted to use this one taken from the Pterodon kit instead. This fully covered helmet and crest was not only ornate enough to denote the Chief's rank, but was also considerably different from the original Star Priest head too. Now the Star Priest neck had a slight angle to it, Attaching the new head to this would still fit, but I wanted the head to angle more upwards and slightly more to the right. So I begin to make changes with my knife, carefully shaving away the protruding side of the neck bit by bit. Throughout this process, I made frequent comparisons between the head and the neck to ensure that the cuts I was making were correct. Finally, once I was happy with both how the new head was fitting and its new position, I was able to glue the head to the neck. With the head conversion completed, I could go about attaching the neck to the torso before then attaching the legs as well. The next task was to change out the main armament. Normally, this torso would be holding a staff aloft in its right arm. To represent a war chief though, I needed something a little more offensive. Now in terms of rules, the chief can be armed with a sickle or an ornate club, but I ultimately chose to not go for either of these. I ultimately settled for this spear, which is also taken from the Terradon Riders kit. Incidentally, nearly all the components required to build this conversion were taken from the Stark Collecting Skink set, which meant that if you wanted to grab a couple of these sets but didn't want two Star Priests, you could build a Chief instead. So to attach the spear to the torso, I began by first of all clipping the small arm stub from just below the ring around the arm. Once clipped away, I was able to trim this area flat using my scalpel. Cutting around this band would help to hide the joint between the old and the new arms without the need for gap filling or sculpting. In much the same way as I did in the previous step, I next made another cut just below the band around the spear holding arm. With the cut made, I could flatten it out and trim with my knife. Now that I had prepped the arm and the torso, I could see about attaching them together, but first I made a comparison to ensure that the angle of the arm was correct and that the surfaces were flat enough to attach to each other. While I was happy with how the arm and the shoulder were fitting, the string that was attached to the torso didn't really have anywhere to easily be joined to the new arm, therefore this needed to be removed also. I began with my clippers before cleaning up the contact with my scalpel. With all this done, I was able to finally glue the arm into place. At this stage, I had a right arm and I had a head, so next I started on the left arm. Skink Chiefs carry a star buckler, but to allow this star priest arm to carry one, I needed to make some modifications to the hand. I wanted to change the angle of the hand, but to do this, I had to start by cutting away the small part of the bracelet from the hand first. I made the cut so that I was able to retain as much of both halves as possible, and once cut, I cleaned up the two parts. With the bracelet half freed from the hand, I could attach this to the arm to create a solid flat wrist. I kept the hand to one side, just for the time being. In addition to the hand's position being adjusted, I also wanted to change the arm's position. Its default pose is being held outwards, but I wanted the arm to be held in a more downwards pointing position. In order to achieve this, 
I need to make a few adjustments to the end of the arm. I used my knife to make a few trims before comparing it against the arm socket. I did this a few times to ensure that the arm had the desired position while still fitting in that socket. Now the joints here didn't need to be perfect. I planned to cover this over with something else, so getting it flawless wasn't a priority. To finish off the arm, I just needed to attach a shield. The shield was taken from the generic skink kit. These were perfect because they're not pre-attached to any arm, which made attaching it to the Starpriest arm that much easier. So, in order for the hand to be attached to the shield, it first needed a little adjustment. The back of the hand was filed back in order to flatten it out, which made the bond much stronger when I glued the two parts together, and also allowed me to attach a handle across the palm. To create this handle, I took some plastic rod. Anything around one millimeter in diameter is perfect for this. I measured this against the palm and clipped it to the desired length. With the handle created, it just needed to be glued between the two struts. With the shield attached to the hand, I could complete the process and glue the hand to the arm. In order to give the model a little more ornate detailing, I took some of the headdresses, also from the Taradin Riders, and used these as shoulder pads. These fitted into place over the shoulders perfectly, with no additional modifications required. It not only helped to further change the silhouette of the model from its original Starpree style, but also allowed me to cover up the slightly less than perfect left shoulder joint. The final modification to make to the miniature to further differentiate it from its base model was to change the base. Normally, the Starpree stands atop a stone staircase, but I chose not to include this. However, to compensate for the raised right foot, I took an orc skull from the Citadel skull set and clipped it at an angle. I filed this down and glued it to the base. By cutting the skull in half, I gave it a buried appearance as well as creating the ideal height for the foot to rest on. Plus, it gave me an excuse to say dead animal bits. With the model built, all that was left to do was to paint and base the miniature, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Skink Warchief. I painted him in a red scheme, much like the red-skinned skinks of the cohort of Sotek found in Total War Warhammer 2. I feel that this really helped to further push this particular model's stature as a chief. As I mentioned, practically all the components used in this conversion, with the exception of the skull, came from the Stark Collecting Skink set. Overall, an excellent starter set if you're looking for some additional components for your conversions. So, if you enjoyed this Age of Sigmar kit bash, then please do let me know, along with any other ideas that you may have for Age of Sigmar base conversions that you'd like to see me tackle in the future. So the final thing to say is a massive thank you to all of my supporters. Whether you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links. Your help is what keeps this channel alive, and it's also what allows me to build these different conversions for you. If you would like to help me out, then you can find all the relevant links in the description below. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.